This is S288, Another World Ago, uh, in January, <laughs> February, if you remember, um, there was a whole lot of concern about the steep rise in the use of flavored e-cigarettes, otherwise known as vapes. Yeah. In schools, they don't leave an odor. Kids can they hide them in their hand. Uh, but there was a lot of health concern about um, their health impacts and a lot of concern about um, the um, uh, chemicals that some of these high temperature um, delivery devices also burned and got inhaled, heavy metals amongst other things. And this was health and welfare's bill. It got more extensive than I will say some of us on the committee were comfortable with. Um, it reached into all flavored, including cigarettes, cigars, um, chewing tobacco. Um, but we started with the vapes and that's where we are, but it's, you know, We've had other health issues on our mind and it kind of got taken off, but it had been my intention to bring this bill up like this was an S bill. We had another week to get S bills out by crossover. It had been my intent to bring this one up for discussion. So I thought we'd have Jen walk us through it. Jill Sudaf garen is here from the Vermont Medical Society. After that, I will leave it to the committee if we go any further with this. And I have, will tell you there is a lot of interest both for the health advocates groups and for people selling um, these products. And it will, it will take us some time in testimony. And this one has not been through the other body. So its chances of crossover are slimmer than some. So with that, Jen, why don't you, can you put it up on the screen and walk us through it? Yes. Do you want to look at the, the actual, so there's a, the bill itself or the, the um, amendment that was passed out of the health and welfare committee, which is 21 pages. I also have a one page summary. I don't know Let's which one you one prefer. Page summary. Okay. <laughs> That'll get us out of here before dinner. All right. Then when you have a moment, would you send me the summary so I could post it? Yes. Thank you. All right. So this is a summary of S288, an act relating to banning flavored tobacco products and e-liquids. It starts off with some findings, including some about youth use of e-cigarettes and flavored e-cigarettes and the regulation of menthol cigarettes. So and we can look at any of these more in more detail if you want from the actual language. Um, section two amends 7 VSA chapter 40, which is the chapter on tobacco products. It expands the definition of tobacco substitutes so that it's a little bit broader and can capture emerging products that might be uh, designed a little differently. It adds a definition of what we called e-liquid, which is the substance that's used with an e-cigarette to produce a vapor or aerosol, regardless of whether the substance contains nicotine. And then um, added that term, added or uh, replaced that terminology e-liquid with some other similar terms, but sometimes inconsistent terms throughout the tobacco statutes. Um, the amendment eliminates the ban on and the penalty for possession of cigarettes, e-cigarettes, and tobacco paraphernalia by people who are under 21 years of age. So it gets rid of the, the ban and the penalty for possession um, under 21, but it keeps the ban and penalty for people under 21 purchasing, attempting to purchase, or using false identification to purchase or attempt to purchase these products or e-liquids. 
So it gets rid of the ban on possession, but it keeps the ban on purchase and penalty on purchase, attempt to purchase and using false ID for purchase. Uh, it updates some statutes on contraband and seizure to include e-cigarettes, e-liquids, and tobacco paraphernalia that are sold, offered for sale, or, or possessed for sale in violation of the internet sales ban and the new flavor ban. So some of this is just updating some of the language to keep pace with other changes to the statutes um, and then adding the new flavor ban. And then it bans the retail sale, but not possession, of flavored cigarettes, e-cigarettes, and e-liquids. So it would only allow tobacco flavored products. This ban includes a ban on the sale, retail sale of menthol cigarettes. And the penalty is up to $100 for a first offense and $500 for a subsequent offense, the same as the penalty for, a sale, for sale to a minor. And that would be assessed on the owner, operator, or manager of a retail establishment not specifically on the clerk. Section three gives the Judicial Bureau jurisdiction over violations of the ban on the sale of flavored tobacco products and, and uh, substitutes and cigarettes and all of those things. Um, section four just has a conforming change, adding e-liquids to the, an exception to the default penalty provision. Section five adds e-liquids to the ban on the use of tobacco products and e-cigarettes on public school grounds. Section six makes a conforming change, just correcting that e-liquid terminology from the different language that was used for the Substance Misuse Prevention Oversight and Advisory Council. Section seven makes some clarifying and conforming changes to the definition of other tobacco products for taxes on e-cigarettes. So one of the things we did here was in, in section one in the tobacco statutes and in section seven in the um, tax statutes tried to harmonize the, direct, the definitions of tobacco products so that they were not, they're a little bit circular and, um, and inconsistent. And then section- Sorry, We have this, right? I'm sorry? I believe finance has this because it has to do with tobacco taxes. It may. There's also the, the penalty for the violation. Um, no, that's of, judiciary. Of, oh, of, okay. I think we then, have it then because yes, maybe it, that is, maybe that is why you have it. Tobacco tax. Okay. Um, well, it's just changing a definition, I think, but we can look more specifically that's at okay. that. That's helpful. We and then it. Section 8 directs the Attorney General's Office to report by December 1st. This, that was the date we put in there um, back in January, so you may want to revisit that, but dir would direct the Attorney General's Office to report by December 1st um, regarding whether and to what extent Vermont could legally restrict advertising and regulate the labels for e-cigarettes and other vaping-related products. Um, and then the act would take effect in a few days, so this is, um, if you decide to pursue this, you may also need to look at, at revisiting that effective date. If this committee we'll take that off. acts on e-cigarettes, the liquid only, not the paraphernalia used to inhale it, and that bill was vetoed, I believe not this session, but the session before. Um, and so right now, this would include e-cigarettes in the tobacco tax, and I I'm, I'm, we'd have to look at that. I don't think that's the, well, let me look before I tell you that is or isn't the case. Maybe that is only, the case. Only John Bloomer knows why we got it. But I know we taxed him and it got vetoed. Okay. I think we were, I thought we were making conforming changes. Well, yeah. Yes. We're, adding, so, we're adding them to the tobacco tax. Well, there aren't. So let me just share this bit of language. So this is... Um, the, the tobacco tax chapter. So section seven here is amending 32 BSA section 7702. And this is the definition of other tobacco products. Um, so it's, it's, so it, under existing law, we have already included, including any liquids, whether nicotine based or not, this would just replace that with e-liquid. So it's the same, concept just using the different terminology um 
So, and otherwise they're, they're, the rest are, are just conforming changes to correct some grammar. Um, but I don't think there's a policy change in section seven. It's just some conforming revisions. Okay. I'm not sure. I thought that's why we had it, but we will take a look. Okay. Senator Sorokin, you have a question. Nolan, can you give us some clarity first? Yes. Um, for the record, anyway. well, the joint fiscal office, uh, there is a fiscal note for this bill. Um, and Graham and I wrote it in January, uh, and there's a revenue impact. So Nolan, I just put it up on the, our web page. Would you like to be co-host so you can share it? Uh, well, Graham's here, so if you want to hear from it, I would recommend he lead on it. But why don't that's up to you whether either if, if Graham's even ready to prepare to talk about it today or another day. I don't want to go. I just want to let you know there was a fiscal note. Okay, Graham, are you prepared to talk about the fiscal note? Uh, I can give you the fiscal note that we prepared back in February, although I, I'm looking through Jen's walkthrough and it's slightly different than what we prepared. The fiscal note that was prepared was for all for banning all flavored tobacco products. So it looks like there, this one included um, like for flavored other tobacco products like cigars would be allowed in this one, it appears. And so okay. I'd have um, to look you're, I think you're looking right now just at um that you may be looking at the tax definition, which is just in there for tax purposes. I mean, I can, I mean, if, if the, the, the majority of the revenue loss here is on the ban of menthol cigarettes. So I could talk about the fiscal note. And even if um, there is yeah. a small ban, even if the ban on cigars and other tobacco products is, is, or is not in the bill, it's not going to move the revenue estimate that much. Um, so if faith wants to pull it up, I can just overview it quickly for the committee. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, essentially, minute, that's all. Yeah. Let me just pull it up on my computer, too. Are you waiting for me to pull it up, Faith, or? Okay, thank you, Faith. It's coming. Sorry, it I'm on my iPad and don't have it. So, um, Nolan and I prepared this fiscal note back in January, and um, you can see in the bill summary that it is it included um, banning the sale of basically all flavored tobacco products, including flavored cigarettes of any kind, other tobacco-based products, cigars, cigarillos, chewing tobacco, snuff, and dipping tobacco. But also was going to ban any flavored electronic cigarettes. Um, and so the fiscal impact on this was going to be a revenue loss. If you scroll a little bit down, Faith, it was going to be a loss of $5.45 million in fiscal 21 um, with $4.76 million um, to the general fund and then $690,000 to the education fund because um, cigarettes and tobacco products do pay the sales and use tax. So um, the majority of that revenue, the $5.45 million comes from the banning of flavored menthol cigarettes. So about um, almost $4 million, $4.1 million of that 5.45 is menthol cigarettes and the remaining is e-cigarettes and other tobacco products. So I can I follow up with any, I can answer any follow up questions. Big fiscal impact is menthol cigarettes. That's correct. Yeah. Right. Has anybody done any projected fiscal impact of the savings that might result from healthier outcomes? Um, I think that I think we addressed that in the fiscal note where we say it's really hard. I mean, it's a great question and it's really hard to essentially the answer is yes, it will have positive health outcomes. And no, we have no way of measuring how much that would, when, you know, when that would be or how to measure it, you know, if it's, it's more long-term. So, I mean, I'm sure that there are studies that have stuff, but there's no easy way to measure that. But I think- the well, I'm sure, for example, as you look back to the effect of the campaigns to reduce tobacco use, there is some measurable effect by reducing smoking that may be very long-term in nature. 
Yeah, I mean, it would be hard to take those studies and yeah. use it to study. I think it's one of those things where, like, we should study it down the road and see what the impact would be if we do this. But I don't think there's any way for us to extrapolate those savings and be able to actually put a number on it. All we can say is, yes, there'll be a positive health effect by reduction, any kind of reduction in tobacco use. Well, I guess if it doesn't, we could reinstitute the use of flavored tobacco down the road. That too. We will be on to something else down the road. Um, and there are lots of people who would like to testify on sure. <laughs> the potential impact of this on health. Um, so right now, Nolan or Graham or Jen, have we got any questions for them? I just just to clarify, I thought I saw at the bottom of the fiscal note that like eighteen or nineteen percent of the loss in revenue would come from the banning of menthol cigarettes. Is this, was that correct or was it flipped? Um, you you have the you have the the stat right. What it is is. Um, uh, menthol cigarettes make up a significant portion of, of total cigarette sales. And in Vermont, it's estimated that about 18% of total cigarette taxes um, come from the sale of, of menthol cigarettes. So if we banned everything but menthol, we'd be losing about 80% of that 5.45 million? Uh um, no. So what, uh, another way of putting this is we collect roughly about 65, 70 million dollars in cigarette taxes a year. Right. And about 18% of the, 18% of the total sales of cigarette taxes are menthol cigarettes. And so, um, it's essentially a statistic that just said, that sort of highlights how, uh, how the, the, the major revenue loss in this bill is from the sale of menthol cigarettes. So if you didn't do the menthol cigarettes as part of this bill, it, instead of a $5.45 million revenue loss, it would be closer to about 1.2, 1.3 million because the menthol cigarettes portion of this bill is about $4.1 million. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're real, yeah, we're real. I'll, take, I'll take your word for that, but how does if it's only eighteen if it's eighteen percent of oh because we're not banning all cigarettes all so. cigarettes it's eighteen percent of the cigarette sales not of the revenue would be yes used. got it got it okay, yeah. okay. sorry uh, I'm right. sorry if I didn't understand the question fully we're still so, on having so, our teeth pulled so we're, we're was, making this was your here. was your invitation madam chair to ask Jen a question as well yes um, so. Uh, I, I guess we would have additional witnesses on this if we go forward with it, but what was the rationale as best you can tell, and Madam Chair, you can answer this as well, for changing uh, the, the age of possession. We just went through raising the age of possession, and now your committee is, I guess, eliminating. Are you eliminating the possession age altogether, or you're lowering it to 18, you're allowed to walk around with cigarettes without any penalty. Uh, I'll walk around. I, Jen. Yeah, I'm looking back at the language, but I, I believe it is the, the, just the walk around the possession piece. So that it would not, so it, it would eliminate the language Right now, the language says a person under 21 years of age shall not possess, purchase, or attempt to purchase, and it would get rid of the shall not possess part and, and just say question. shall not purchase. That's my question. Do you know the thinking as to why the committee did that? I, I can try that. <laughs> um, I think the idea was that we wanted to stop the sale as we have but we didn't want to get in, you know, we, we did this with possession of alcohol and you ended up getting a lot of kids in a lot of trouble that 
wasn't really what we wanted to do. We wanted to, to start, we wanted to go after the manufacturers, the sellers, but we didn't really want to start trying to criminalize teenagers. Did we, have we done that for alcohol too? I don't know. I don't think so. Okay. I, I just, I, I just find it curious because we just did that a year ago or two years ago that we lowered, the, we raised the age for sales and possession. And I'm wondering why the rethinking of that at this point. And when, I think when you hear from Jill from the Medical Society, she may be able to touch on that because I think they were one of the groups that was in favor of eliminating the penalty on possession. Yes, definitely. This is Jill Satoff Garen um, from the Vermont Medical Society and just saying that um, those possession laws that are going after youth have not been shown to be very um, enforced very well. Also, it just sets up a situation where you're not really going after the youth are the ones that are being targeted by the industry. They're being targeted by the sales. And so we do really want to go after the seller and the retailer, not the youth. So I think we were in your committee um, with some testimony on this as well. And I can send you that if you want, Senator Sorokin. I would like to see that. Sure. But one of the concerns with this bill was we had just raised the purchasing age to 21. It went in, I believe, either last September or October. So it's been in effect for about a year. And when we were looking at this in January, one of the concerns was, well, they're not allowed to buy anything. So why are we banning adults? Um, knowing full well that you can go to, con you know, you can drive over the border um, and buy whatever you want, which is the other issue that's out there. And we did ascertain that if Senator Westman's Senior Citizens Club went to Montreal and purchased a couple of packs of menthol cigarettes for their neighbor that they were not criminally liable. But so you can still go to New Hampshire and do 21 and come back with them. Or if you're 18, you can go to New Hampshire or 16 whatever the age is there. Okay, Jill, why don't you? Sure. So Jill Satoff Garen, for the record, um, thank you for having me. I'm gonna be talking about the health impacts, not the finance impacts. Um, I'm also speaking on behalf of the Vermont Academy of um, Pediatricians, the Vermont chapter. Um, and the Vermont Academy of Family Physicians. And we support banning all flavored tobacco products, including the e-liquids and the menthol products. And basically I'm gonna keep my comments pretty brief. I did send Faith um, some documents uh, for you to take a look at, but I just wanna say that during the COVID pandemic, we really weren't focused on this bill. And like Ann said, it seems like a million years ago that we were dealing with the youth um, vaping epidemic. And we were dealing with looking every day and seeing the CDC saying there's, you know, so many p youth going to the ER with these lung collapsing and um, respiratory yeah. issues related to vapes. Um, but I will say that it's extremely relevant right now and even during the COVID pandemic, and uh, particularly because we've seen the youth behavioral risk survey data, which shows that among high school students in Vermont, the use of uh, e-cigarettes and vapes has more than doubled from 12% in 2017 to 26% in 2019. So we still have a serious problem. We're also dealing with the fact that kids are about to go back to school. So they're they're going to go back to um, maybe their peer groups where they've used these products in the past. 
And then a study was just published August 11th, which I feel like is super relevant um, in the Journal of Adolescent Health. And it found that teenagers and young adults who vape were five times more likely to experience COVID symptoms. And so because they were experiencing these symptoms, they were able to be tested. And those that were tested that used e-cigarettes were five times more likely to be diagnosed with COVID. Now, these are not the age group that really got COVID, but the fact that they were using vapes made them more susceptible to getting COVID. And then those um, teenagers and young adults who used both e-cigarettes and conventional cigarettes were 6.8% more likely to be diagnosed with COVID. So this is a serious issue. Um, we know that flavors are what appeal to kids. Um, I like Skittle flavored. We like Skittle flavored. If it's Skittle or gummy bear flavored, kids are going to want to buy it. And we know that 80% of our youth between the ages of 12 and 17 years old started with a flavored product. So they start with a flavored product and then nearly 90% of adult smokers, the ones that become adult smokers started before the age of 18. So you're really just developing, the industry is developing their adult user who is going to keep their industry alive. The problem is that these flavored products that are out there right now, they are in a super high potency of nicotine. So we don't even know what the health impacts of this is going to be. We know that one pod, one um, of the jewel pods equals one pack of cigarettes. And we also know that flavors, although the FDA did approve flavors to be used in food, they were not to be inhaled. And so the byproducts of heating these e-liquids and what happens on our lungs are not understood. So we don't really understand what's going to happen with the high potency and we don't really understand what's going to happen when these irritants get into our lungs, except that we know that kids are more susceptible to these vaping problems, which are sending them to the hospital, and they're more susceptible to COVID. We also know that the reward centers of the adolescent brain are particularly vulnerable to nicotine and to that addictive priming of the brain. So I would say ideally none of the tobacco products would be exempted, especially menthol, because it's been specifically targeted and marketed to low-income populations and the Black American communities. Uh, but our members do support moving this bill because we really think that it's important to stop the initiation of youth users. Um, and there's a lot of data on the information that I uh, sent Faith, so hopefully you'll get a chance to review that, but I'm open to any questions. Okay, any questions for Jill? Uh, Sandra Pearson. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm curious, Jill, do we have any data to figure out whether Tobacco 21 is working in Vermont? Um, that's a good question. I, I mean, I do know that those numbers were uh, that I just cited were 2019 numbers. And like Anne was saying that the, the tobacco 21 just went into effect um, September of 2019. So um, I think that the data is not in on that um, quite yet, but I can reach out to the Department of Health and see if we have any um, more information on that. And we also, at the same time, uh, basically almost doubled the cost of vapes and e-cigarettes and all that, right? Uh, do, do we have any data on, on the impact there? Um, we have uh, data just in terms of um, there being, you know, people have done some switching. And so that's what we're worried about a little bit in terms of if the menthol is still out there that uh, kids could switch um, to regular combustibles, so. But it's illegal for them to buy it. Yes, it is illegal, yes. Um, and then there was one other point I wanted to make because um, 
Senator Brock was asking about uh, just in terms of if we've quantified cost and we've quantified savings in terms of our prevention interventions. And I will say that uh, annually we spend $348 million um, in uh, healthcare costs related to tobacco use. So when you put that up against um, the impact of this legislation, I, I think it I think that the healthcare costs are more um, meaningful. And I also just wanted to say that um, the, the 3450 of 50% of Vermonters um, have four chronic diseases and that's related to three behaviors. And the first one being tobacco use. And that chronic disease costs money as well. So one little piece, if I, I was reminded, um, in addition to Vermont's um, increase to the of the smoking age to 21, that actually nationally there is now a federal um, age 21 for sale of tobacco products. Okay. So to the extent that's helpful, it was passed in December of 2019. Right, and it's passed and signed. Okay. Um, there is also a federal ban on flavors, but I gather it's got some mixed reviews as to how it's being enforced or interpreted, but we can check that out if anyone would like. Okay. Yes, the, the very short version of that is that there's three different types of um, of flavored e-cigarettes. There's the pods. There's the um, ones that come as a, a already filled electronic cigarette. And then there's the open tank ones. And it's only the pods that are uh, restricted under the federal law. The, the, um, the filled ones and the open tank ones are not, although there's some potential regulatory enforcement um, that could happen in the future. So I'm a little unclear, uh, Jill, as to what you were saying about menthol. It sounded to me like you were about to say that they're an important part of this bill, but you would like to see the bill move forward, even if that wasn't part of it. And I think I got an email from one of the tobacco control lobbyists saying that, but can you state what your position is about this bill going forward with or without menthol coverage and who again, I mean, I know you said you represented the, the pediatric groups and stuff like that, but I didn't understand who your main client was. Um, well, I am the, um, policy and communications manager for the Vermont Medical Society. And we also represent the American Academy of Pediatrics, the Vermont chapter and the Vermont family of physicians. Got it. Okay. So it's uh, made up of uh, 2,400 physician and physician assistants across the state of Vermont. And we would like to see this bill move forward with all tobacco products because we don't want to see the switching and we've seen that in other occasions and there's actually um in the the information that i sent there is um data that shows that youth do switch but we also feel like the incremental step of moving this forward of a flavored ban will stop the initiation uh, or reduce the initiation from youth because we know that that if 80% of our teenagers and young adults are getting hooked by the, the flavor, they start with a flavored product, then by banning that flavored product, you're going to at least reduce the initiation. And so we do think it's an important step that being said, again, ideally, everything would be included. All. So, so, all. so flavored 
does not include menthol. It does. I'm saying so I'm, still, I'm still confused what your position is on menthol then. We would like menthol to be included. Right. But would you not want the bill to go forward if it doesn't include menthol? Right now, I'm saying that I would want the bill to move forward. If with menthol, or, if, menthol if menthol is taken out, our members still feel like this would be an incremental step that we would support moving the bill forward. Okay, thank you. Half a loaf is better than none. But we would like to see it included if possible. Right. Okay. Committee, Senator McDonald. Um, there was some testimony about studies taking place since we last discussed this uh, back in the, the late spring, in the spring, having to do with COVID. Could you, uh, did, did, Can I send did it? studies suggest that vapors were more likely to contract COVID or they were, um, vapors were more likely to test positive for COVID? They were more likely to contract it, even in the age category that they were in. So were they, okay. And if they contract it, then they're more likely to pass it along just by logic. Yes, but they also were suffering from it as well because of their, their lungs were already compromised. And so it made them more likely, five times more likely. Okay. Well, our, our, the rationale, which finally um, banned the smoking of cigarettes in restaurants and public places, wasn't based on that it was a stupid thing to do. It was that the, those that, it was that the secondhand smoke, um, affected people who um, weren't smoking in those same locations. Exactly. So, um, so I, maybe it would be a stretch for Dr. Levine to recommend that, uh, that um, we ban the product to stop the more rapid spread of the COVID-19. Uh, that would only be a temporary um, solution to a temporary, I hope a temporary problem. Thank you. I did send the study to Faith as well, if you want to look at okay, it. Okay, good. So we can take a look at that. Yep. All right. And again, remember January, instead of people dying of COVID, we had the whole rash and that came down to pre-filled with Cannabis, wasn't that where they, they, but we had a whole rash of teenagers in the hospital with severely damaged lungs. So that was the atmosphere the committee was living in when they were looking at this bill. Uh, we're now in another world and another yeah. whole yeah. lung damaging viruses, but. Um, okay. Committee, um, think about this. Let me know what you'd like to do. If you'd like to hear from other people, let me know. So I think that's it for today. We actually did well on time, um, despite all the technical difficulties. And thank you. Um, Thank you, folks, for hanging in there. Thank you, Faith and Delia, if you see her, for getting us all straightened out. And I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow we are doing broadband. And ending live stream now.